Cardinal Ratzinger defines and emphasizes the primary purpose of the liturgy, confirming the main concerns of Archbishop Lefebvre, which vindicates the trads. Brethren in Christ, Laudetu Jesus Christus in sequela. This is Timothy Flanders of the Meaning of Catholic. Jesus is King. Happy Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Today, we're going to talk about the definition of the liturgy, which is very fitting for this feast day, in which we worship the sacred heart of Jesus. And it really becomes acute when we discuss this particular aspect of the liturgical controversy, which is extremely important. It's fundamental. And so we'll get into that in a minute. First, I want to encourage everyone to join the online guild. This apostolate is supported by an online guild. We don't run any ads on YouTube. We are reliant on guild subscribers who get access to the exclusive guild content they get free books and the guild online community so please consider joining the guild it's patreon.com slash meaning of catholic you can also donate or if you can't afford it you can always join for free contact me at meaning of catholic.com slash contact the guild is a an effort for us to support one another against the marxists to share practical wisdom different things that we can do economically to help each other uh, spiritually, practically uh, sharing our knowledge, our, our wisdom that we've gained through trial and error. We've done um, a number of different shows on uh, homesteading, um, uh, chicken farming. We've done financial stuff. We're doing a health share show in a couple weeks. So that'll be cool. Uh, so join the online guild, patreon.com slash meaning of Catholic. So today, the definition of the liturgy. First, I want to quote from one of the earlier godfathers of the trad movement, which is uh, Dietrich von Hildebrand, in his book, uh, Liturgy and Personality. And here's how he defines the liturgy. And you're going to see how this definition is the same for Archbishop Lefebvre. And then it's also the same for Cardinal Ratzinger. So listen to this. This is Liturgy of the Personality, Hildebrand, pass page two. Quote, the liturgy is not primarily intended as a means of sanctification or an ascetic exercise. Its primary intention is to praise and glorify God to respond fittingly to him. Now, and then uh, page later, page four, he says this, the soul grows wings, that is, the deepest inner transformation takes place only if there is a real penetration of values and a real self-forgetfulness is achieved. So this is the, so the worship of God, we're caught up in the liturgy with the worship of God, especially when we, we think about the, the Feast of the Sacred Heart, we are Christ in his sacred heart is offering his sacrifice of his sacred heart to the Father, and we are entering into the sacrifice, the worship of the Holy Trinity. And this is what catches us up into heaven. And so this is, this is what uh, Hildebrand brings out here, is that it is all about the worship of God, and that in and of itself that is what where the transforming power of the liturgy is because the trans because the liturgy is focused on god alone worshiping god that is what transforms man now listen to this what he says this is where this is uh writing in 1933 but this prophesies all of our liturgical crisis so listen to this were this act of beholding values so this is what hildebrand's philosophy is is all about beholding the, the values of God, meaning God's justice, God's beauty, the metaphysical holiness of God in the liturgy is what we behold. This is like the beatific vision. Um, so this is, this is what he means by beholding values. Were this act of beholding values to become a means of attaining such transformation, at that very moment, it would cease to be a genuine irradiation of by values, and they no longer would be taken in their proper seriousness there would no longer be a true communion with the world of values and the deep transformation would thus be halted. So he's saying, if you take the worship of God in the liturgy and you turn that worship of God as a means to an end and the end being the cate catechizing of man or the sanctification of man, then it loses its transforming power because now you're focused on man and be by focusing on man, you lose that transforming aspect, that, that forgetfulness of self caught up in the worship of the liturgy so this is this is prophesying this whole problem now let's let's look at uh biography of archbishop lefebvre page 277 is when he 
he starts looking at the draft Sacrosanctum Concilium. And it, here, this is um, De Tissier talking on uh, page 277. Archbishop of the Fev himself denounced the, quote, definition of the liturgy, which seems incomplete because the sacramental and sanctifying aspects are given more emphasis and the aspect of prayer is not emphasized enough. The fundamental aspect of the liturgy is the worship given to God, an act of religion. So the, the virtue of religion, which is giving God his due, Archbishop Lefebvre detects in this liturgical movement coming into the Second Vatican Council in the first schema of Sacrosanctum Concilium that there's, there's this emphasis on active participation of the faithful, of catechizing the faithful, and that's becoming a greater emphasis than even the worship of God. And so as, as Hildebrand notes, this is if we turn the liturgy from the worship of God to the catechizing of man, it is a very subtle shift, shift would, which would actually sacrifice the catechizing of man. And, and it, would, it would destroy the transformation of man in the liturgy because man can only be transformed if the liturgy is an act of religion, an act of worshiping God first and foremost alone. That is how man is transformed. And so what we have in what happened with the, the liturgical movement, with Second Vatican Council and Sacrosanctum Concilium, was that the, the phrase active participation was emphasized again and again and again. Everything was done for active participation of the faithful. Now, the, this, the document itself, Sacra Santa Concilium, says two different things that are seemingly contradictory because it emphasizes, one, that the principle of worship of Almighty God is the principle of the liturgy. But on the other hand, it says that the reform should follow active participation above all. And so... These should have been harmonized so that it was understood that the, the worship of God is first and foremost. And every single thing that could be sacrificed for that end, for active participation, should not have been done. But in fact, it was done. And th so that created this situation, which is what Hildebrand predicted in 1933, where the worship of my God was sacrificed for the sake of catechizing man in the liturgy. And this is what this is what has created this situation. Now, let's look at what Cardinal Ratzinger says, and this is um, Spirit of the Liturgy. And so he, um, what he brings out is this very concept, and he brings it out further in, in his text here. Really, this, this Spirit of the Liturgy, this, so this came out in um, the German edition was 2000. In, in a, in a re very real way, this is a... a a scriptural apologetic for the liturgy understood as sacrifice, which is, it, it is a beautiful theological reflection on the essence of the liturgy as the sacrifice, as the Paschal mystery, the sacrifice of Pascha in the liturgy. And when you, when you go over to, so my edition, this is the Saint, Saint uh, the Ignatius press edition from 2000 uh, on page 171. He says this, we talked about active participation. Um, now he has the right interpretation of Sacrosanctum Concilium because he emphasizes this. He says, the Second Vatican Council gave us the phrase active participation of everyone in the Opus Dei in what happens in the worship of God. The Catechism uh, points out that the word liturgy speaks to us of a common service, thus has a reference to the whole people of God. Unfortunately, the word was very quickly misunderstood to mean something external entailing a need for general activity, as if as many people as possible, as often as possible, should be visibly engaged in action. But, but Ratzinger emphasizes exactly what Karch uh, Archbishop Lefebvre emphasized, that the, the action of the prayer of Christ himself to the Father is the action. That's the real action of the liturgy. The oratio, the canon, is really more than speech. It is an oxio in the highest sense of the word. What happens in it is that the human oxio steps back and makes way for the oxio divina, the action of God. This action of God, which takes place through human speech, is the real action for which all creation is in expectation. The real action in the liturgy in which we are all supposed to participate is the action of God himself. 
The whole event of the incarnation, cross, resurrection, and second coming is present as the way by which God draws man into cooperation with himself. As we have seen, this is expressed in the liturgy and the fact that the petition for acceptance is the part of the oratio. True, the sacrifice of the logos incarnate is accepted already and forever, but we must still pray for it to become our sacrifice that we ourselves, as we said, may be transformed into the Logos, conformed to the Logos, and so be made the true body of Christ. There is only one action, which is at the same time his and ours. Ours because we have become one body and one spirit with him. The uniqueness of the Eucharistic liturgy lies precisely in the fact that God himself is acting, and that we are drawn into that action of God. Everything else is therefore secondary. End quote. So Ratzinger brings out this, this fundamental truth of that the liturgy is the worship of Almighty God, and he and is by emphasizing the, the concept of the action of God. The action of God is the action in the liturgy into which we want to have active participation. We want to be caught up into the worship of Almighty God, which is the action of Christ. It is the action of Christ in the liturgy that we want to participate in. It is not, it is not, if we come to the liturgy primarily to be sanctified ourselves and not to worship Almighty God, Ratzinger says everything else is secondary. It is the action of God that counts in the liturgy. And this is the fundamental aspect of the liturgy that we need to emphasize when we consider these things, and especially on the Feast of Sacred Heart. When we worship Almighty God for for his immense love in the sacrifice of Christ. And in this feast in particular, we encounter Christ and his infinite value, the infinite value of the charity of his heart and the charity of this heart, which is offered to the father on the cross. And so Cardinal Ratzinger brings out this critical truth. And so the, what, what we've seen is that the, the good of catechizing the faithful has been used to sacrifice the summum bonum, the greatest good, which is the worship of Almighty God. And so that that is the trick that, that's happened because we can emphasize again and again the great good of catechizing the faithful, sanctifying the faithful in the liturgy. All those things are very good. But if you don't have that strong hierarchy that Ratzinger really emphasizes in this in this passage and there's really in this whole book, participation in the act action of God, that is what truly transforms man. And that is why trads have been fighting for the ancient Rome of right of the Latin mass, which offers to God the sacrifice of praise. And it is oriented toward God. Uh, it most conspicuously in the orientation of the priest towards God and not towards the faithful, uh, but in many other ways. And so Ratzinger brings out this theological principle, the scriptural principle of the worship of mighty God and the action of religion participating in the oratio and the axio divina, the action of, the, of God himself. And that is the principle of the liturgy, which all of this confirms Archbishop Lefebvre's main concern from the very beginning. And it goes back even to Hildebrand back in 1933. Because they were doing that same sort of these concepts in the liturgical movement back in the 30s and 40s. They were they were celebrating versus populum with the Latin mass. And so Hildebrand notes this and he puts his finger on this main principle. Archbishop Lefebvre does the same thing. And Cardinal Fratzinger does the same thing again, noting how active participation was twisted into an emphasis on the activity of the faithful instead of the action of God himself into which we participate. So this is worship of mighty God. So that's all we have this week. Once again, please join the online guild, meaningofcatholic.com slash contact to get a, a free access if you can't afford it. Otherwise, $5 a month or more can get you free access to the uh, free content, the uh, good, the books we're releasing. We have our, our new book coming out in the fall, um, which is the Roman Catechism Explained for the Modern World. We've got that going on. We also have the Domestic Church Group, which we're going to be launching publicly next month, uh, which is helping uh, parents to pass down the faith, homeschooling resources, liturgy of the home resources, things like that. So let's offer up an Ave Maria.
and asking us to be made worthy through Our Lady's prayers, especially on the Feast of the Sacred Heart, to offer God, offer to God the praise that is due to Him in the worship of the liturgy, that our liturgy may be worthy, not just in the externals, but more importantly, in the internal union of our hearts with the Sacred Heart of Jesus. In nomine Patris et Filii Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus frutus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in hora mortis nostre. Amen. Our Lady of Victory, pray for us. Saint Joseph, terror of demons, pray for us. Saint Anthony of the Desert, pray for us. In nomine Patris et Filii, Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Jesus is King.